Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this post-mortem of my Blitz game numbers 873. My opponents start off with d4 and I went uh, d5. And here we went uh, bishop f4, which uh, leads to the London system. I think uh, Leeches calls this the Mason attack, but uh, it's typically played by players who are going for the London system, so that's how I classified it. Um, now the normal move here is uh, knight f6, and I've played this a lot myself. Um, if uh, if you follow the main line for a little bit, we'll get to the setup. I'll, I'll go ahead and show this to you. I get an early c5 here, putting pressure on the center. Uh, white defends. Knight c6, you get this knight to a good active post. c3, setting up the typical London system triangle. e6 now, defending the pawn. Uh, knight bd2. And bishop d6. And I've played many games from this point, and, uh, you know, black has uh, decent chances. But, uh, well, I mean, part of the problem is just that I've played so many games. Uh, I was just getting tired of it, and I wanted to uh, try something different. Um, but I also wanted to mention this is part of a repertoire that I'm recommending for um, d4 sidelines, things the black player can play against d4 sidelines, and it's based on this kind of setup. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video if you are interested. Um, anyway, let's go back to the game. So in the game, instead of playing uh, knight f6 here, I played g6. And g6 is not even in the uh, opening book at all. And it's not the best move there. Um, it's okay, though. I looked at it with a chess engine. It doesn't seem to be... Uh, there doesn't seem to be any immediate uh, win for uh, white here. It just gives white uh, kind of a free hand a little bit on the... Uh, on the king side here. It's not really challenging uh, white setup. Uh, but on the other hand, white, when uh, when white is playing the London system, white really is not playing too aggressively anyway. So you have kind of an opportunity here to get whatever setup you like, um, particularly this bishop e2 move. I don't know what that's about. Um, but let, well, let's go on for one more move. I played knight c6 with the idea the bishop and the knight are now coordinating on the uh, e5 square. So I can get in that move e5. And I think that's an equalizing move if I can get it in. And he didn't do anything about that. He just played c3. Um, he should go knight, knight f3. Knight f3 is just the normal move here, and it stops me. And I would have to uh, rethink my plans at this point. Probably have to settle for uh, e, e6 here. And, um, well, you know, if I want to keep that diagonal open and keep hopes alive of, uh, of getting that... Uh, Getting that pawn to e5 push in, I may have to uh, move my knight to e7 and, uh, and maybe later route it to f5, something like that. But anyway, that's not how the game went. He went uh, c3 and uh, just let me play e5. So I think I'm doing fine here. He dropped back. And uh, yeah, the chess engine actually gives an advantage to black in this position. So how quickly uh, things can turn here when white is uh, playing passively like this. Um, the move I chose, uh, knight h6, maybe not the best, but, um, well, it's okay. Keeps keeps a, an edge for black, I think. Uh, knight to e7 is one idea, but the, the top choice of the chess engine was just to play h5. <laughs> not something I would really recommend uh, myself if I hadn't uh, studied it a little bit. Uh, but you just, uh, it makes sense, you're just going for that bishop, which is a little short of squares, <laughs> asking what it's what it's going to do over there. Anyway, I went with knight h6, and he went with a3. And this move I really have to uh, question. Um, and once again, he should play knight f3, and uh, we might get this kind of game. Knight f3, e4, knight, knight drops back to d2. And it looks like an uh, interesting play from here. Maybe I could uh, push the f-pawn forward, get a rook behind it, and, and push on to uh, f4. So... Uh, could be interesting play, but um, also playable for white. Um, so a3, you know, he's just taking too many liberties with his pawns, too too slow for his setup. So I continue with knight f5. This is a, a good move, hitting his bishop. He plays knight d2, and um, I grab the bishop pair here, opening up the h file for him. And goes a bishop to e6, um, castling is uh, I go bishop to e6. Castling is what the chess engine recommends for me at this point and, uh, and gives black an edge here. So I think uh, actually it's a pretty comfortable position. If you look at this, I've, I've castled. I've got two pieces out. Um, 
white has two pieces out as well, but white is not castled and isn't able to castle uh, quickly because there's a knight of the way on this side and a queen of the way on this side. Also, these two pieces don't look like they're particularly well developed. They, they're out off the back rank, but they're not doing a whole lot. So anyway, edge to black in this position. So just castling. Uh, the game might continue with, um, say, white try, tries to get the other knight out. I could kick it, <laughs> and it, it just drops back. That was actually a chess engine line. I guess uh, uh, maybe just to provoke that uh, e4 move and resolve the situation in the center. And then, uh, well, I could play knight e7 here and bring my knight over to the king side, and I guess he could try and bring his knight out to uh, h3. Funny line. Anyway, I went uh, bishop e6 here, just uh, developing another piece. And um, he went uh, b4, once again, kind of a, a questionable move. And I think at this point I was sort of triggered <laughs> and uh, into playing uh, a little bit recklessly. Uh, but once again, if I just castle here, I have a comfortable edge and uh, I should be fine. Let's see. Oh, th there is a line here. Let's see. Knight b3, a6, I guess, to keep the bishop from coming out here. Uh, rook to c1, b6 to keep the knight from hopping in. Uh, knight to h3, finally getting this knight into the game. And queen to e7. I don't know. I mean, this is the kind of slow game you often get in these London system uh, closed setups. And, uh, you know, it's it's certainly good for black, but maybe not what I wanted to play at the time. So I went ahead with the exchange. And um, so this is even, actually. You know, so the exchange is, isn't bad itself. What's bad is the sacrifice. And I sacrifice a piece here for two pawns. And um, I really don't have enough. And actually, uh, white plays some good moves uh, to start with. So rick to c1 is good. Uh, we'll see why. Um, I mean, it puts some immediate pressure on the c-pawn and ties my queen down, but also later after after I castle queenside, it, it uh, plays a role in some potential tactics that white had, uh, which he didn't take advantage of. Let's see, knight to f3, finally developing. Um, now that uh, things are getting urgent here, I drop my bishop back, and I want to keep control of these squares. Uh, through all of this, the uh, chess engine gives white an edge of, uh, you know, plus one to plus two, basically what you would expect if uh, if you've sacrificed a piece for two pawns, uh, your opponent should have the advantage, unless you have something else going for you. And I don't really have uh, enough going for me here. Uh, one problem is that uh, white could just castle at any time. I haven't done anything to prevent that. And it doesn't seem that I can really stop it. I do have the bishop pair. That's, that's one thing I have going for me. But they are not particularly active at the moment, and he's managed to get his pieces out. So just not enough for the sacrifice. Uh, let's see. He played uh, knight to b3. I went uh, queen d6, so I could castle queen side. He went uh, knight to c5. That's another good move. And, uh, you know, hitting this pawn, hitting my bishop. And here I went ahead and castled queen side. So the chess engine says I should just drop my queen back to e7. Defending this way, I can't do anything about... Um, him taking that light squared bishop, although that's not my better bishop, so it's not not a big deal if he takes it, but it's just less less attacking possibilities for me the more he trades off those pieces. Um, and again, that keeps the advantage in white's favor by one to two points. I castled queenside, though, and this is actually a big mistake, and, uh, and he has a really good move here that could have uh, ended the game. So if you want to... Uh, Check out this position, see if you can spot a good move for uh, white here. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. The, um, the idea here is to play the move b5. The move is b5. And, um, well, first of all, I don't want to take. If I take, um, he can move the, bitch, the knight with check and pick up the queen. So, you know, I just don't want to open this file on my king. But if I don't take, then what am I doing? If I uh, move the king to the side, that was probably my first uh, reaction he can take <laughs> anyway. And um, let's see, I suppose I should take back with the queen. Um, yeah, maybe I, I can take back with the queen here. I looked at this other line, which is kind of funny. If I played b6 to try and avoid opening things up, he can actually push on with c7. That's a nasty fork. And uh, if I take the pawn, then once again, I, I run into this uh, check discovered check on my queen and it 
a king an attack on my queen. Uh, anyway, I think there was there might have been something wrong with queen takes as well. So that's all bad for me. Uh, but fortunately, he didn't play uh, he didn't play that b5 move. He played knight to uh, d4 and let me get my king to safety. So we're back in that range where um, where white is better, but maybe not so much better. Uh, and then he did finally grab my bishop here. Actually, the, the chess engine is in no hurry to grab the bishop and thinks uh, white is best to just uh, castle here, uh, take advantage of this opportunity. He's got me kind of slowed down here. I don't have any immediate attack on the king. He can just castle to safety, and he's in pretty good shape there. Anyway, he played knight takes bishop. I take back. And... Um, and then he plays rook b1, and after this, actually, uh, his advantage starts to diminish. One problem with rook b1, I, the, well, there's a logic to rook b1. He's getting his rook over here, uh, putting it up, opposite my king with the intention of pushing these pawns forward to open up my king's side. So it's a plan, and um, it's, it's, the problem is it's just a little bit slow, and he still hasn't um, secured his king. And... Immediately after rook b1, in fact, I could have played bishop to c3 check uh, to guarantee that he never castles. And after king to f1, you know, this he might have some trouble getting his rook into play. Um, white is still better here, actually, but uh, but he's uh, he's letting me play on, and his advantage is uh, slipping bit by bit as he makes these somewhat slow moves. So rook to b1 is a bit of a slow move. Let's see, I go h5 here. Um, and uh, instead of h5, once again, I could have played... Oh, yeah, that was the point. Yeah, I could have played bishop c3 check there. After a4, there's another point where I could play bishop c3 check. This is interesting, too, although it's not as clear. Um, because, uh, well, I was thinking I would just um, win, a, win a pawn here. Because if he just takes my bishop back, I'll take his, uh, take his knight. I mean, I might not want to uh, give up my bishop in exchange for a knight and a pawn, given that I'm down material, but it does does help equalize the material, and I'd be up uh, three pawns for the piece. Uh, but he has a, an escape move here with knight takes e6, and if I grab the knight, he can take my bishop, so I play a move like rook d7, getting it out, and then maybe I'll chase that knight away later. And so anyway, complicating things, but not leading to any big advantage for uh, me. So white, white keeps the edge in these lines. Uh, let's see. I went rook h to f8, which was not the strongest move there, but keeps things interesting. Uh, let's see. He went queen to c2. Uh, that was a good move, defending the knight. That takes away some of these ideas, also stopping me from coming to the c3 square. So I go um, bishop to d4, putting pressure on the knight this way and attacking the f-pawn. And uh, here he plays bishop to f3. And at this point, uh, his, his advantage has, has diminished by quite a bit. I think this was his last chance to just uh, safely castle uh, and should be, should be significantly better. After bishop to f3, things are really uh, not that clear. I push on with e5. He finally castles, but now I can push on with e4. And it's actually a little bit tricky for uh, white to find a move at this point. Um, and he doesn't find the, the best move. Um, you know, one idea is actually just to give the material back. Uh, he could take the pawn with the knight, for example, and, uh, you know, lead to kind of an even position. Um, he could counterattack. This is the best move. Counterattacking my bishop. And so I don't really have time to grab his bishop. And uh, if I take the knight as a way to gain a tempo and then take his bishop, well, he takes back with a pawn hitting my queen. And so I don't gain that tempo and uh, he gets to save his bishop, and I'm down a key attacking piece. So um, so that was the defensive move that uh, white really needed to find to, uh, to keep his edge. And after bishop to e2, um, just moving the bishop out of the way, uh, the, the situation has changed, and now uh, uh, black has the advantage. And I think, um, you know, maybe he hadn't noticed this, this tactic with the... Uh, the pin, you know, now that my bishop is not under threat, as long as my bishop is not under threat, I can I can just grab this uh, pawn here because of the pin on the uh, f pawn, and um, 
you know, the tide has changed. At this point, uh, black has the advantage in the game for the first time uh, since I made that sacrifice. So, and his, uh, his f-pawn is still under fire, so I moved the bishop again uh, so that he could defend along the second rank. And then I played rook takes f2, which is not a bad move, but in fact, there's an even stronger move here. Uh, which is e3. <laughs> and, uh, I just uh, pointed this out. I had to point this out because it's uh, it's so interesting. He can uh, take my queen, right? When when I push that pawn forward, it blocks the bishop. So his pawn is no more longer uh, his his pawn is no longer pinned, and he can just take my queen. So he's uh, a whole queen and a piece up. But I have this move with check, and. Um, if uh, if the rook blocks, I just take the rook with check and then queen. Um, best move is to move the king out of the way so that I don't at least queen with check, and I still get to take take that rook and queen. So I get uh, I get my uh, queen back and I win the rook and I'm just uh, winning by force of material. Uh, so anyway, that's that's a pretty clever tactic. I played rook takes f2, which is also winning, um, and he takes. And now I go e3, and he just doesn't have a uh, a way to save this position. Uh, for a while, the chess engine thought that uh, that White could get a draw here with uh, Rick, with Knight to d7 check, and the idea is if I take it, then he can move this Rook with check, and then I move my King out of the way, and then. Uh, Let's see, he can play queen e2 and blockade the pawn. So he sacrificed a piece, and um, and the material is now even, but I've lost this uh, big check here. Um, yeah, so it's queen, rook, and bishop. No, oh, no, I'm down a rook. That's right, I'm down a rook here, but um, the chess engine rates this position as even. That's right, I had sacrificed a, a, a rook on f2. I forgot that. I got my piece back, but I'm still down a rook. But anyway, the chess engine thinks this... Uh, position should be uh, a draw. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that works out, but uh, but actually there's a better move for black here. I don't take the knight. I just uh, move the king, uh, and now there's no more checks, and there's not much he can do. He can blockade here, but then uh, now I take the knight, and, uh, and this is still uh, winning for black. I guess I don't quite see the plan here. I, I didn't follow this line any further. I just uh, uh, noticed the engine evaluation that uh, this was good for uh, black. I, yeah, I hadn't noticed. I'm, I'm still down a rook here. <laughs> I was thinking I was just up, up pawns. But um, let's see. I've got three pawns for the rook, four pawns for the rook. And uh, and his rook is over here kind of out of play. So I guess, I guess my plan from this point is to... Uh, activate my rook and uh, break through. Uh, anyway, this is still uh, winning for black, but that's uh, best the best defense the white has to sacrifice the knight with that check. Uh, anyway, he tried rook f3, which I was at first uh, worried about because I noticed that uh, queen here check, uh, this just this doesn't even lead to a draw because I come back here and check again, and then he blocks it with the rook. So... Um, yeah, I wasn't sure that was going to lead to anything. Uh, but then I noticed that uh, after this pushing the pawn forward with check, um, the king has to move. He doesn't have any other alternative. And uh, it can't escape the check. If he could step away from the check, then I would still have to worry about my queen getting taken. But the only square he has available is h1. And I can queen with check. And now this is actually a forced mate. In fact, it was a forced mate from... Uh, from when he played rook f3, there's a mate in three there, starting with the, the move I played, e2 check. So anyway, that's how it went, e2 check, king h1, e1, queen. So pretty interesting game. I had a lot of fun with it. I think, um, you know, even though that sacrifice was incorrect, I think, um, you know, you should probably play these sacrifices every now and then if they look to have some uh, interesting features. And uh, you can always go over them later and find out how sound they were. But... Uh, you know, if you never play these kind of sacrifices, then you're not going to find out uh, what works and what doesn't. So that's that's why you play them. <laughs> so it's a, a learning experience. You try these sacrifices out and try and figure figure out uh, what makes them work. In this case, um, 
White had some decent uh, defensive resources, so it wasn't quite a, a working sacrifice, but it still required at certain points uh, careful play from White, and he uh, just uh, didn't quite manage to find the right moves. Anyway, see you guys later. Bye.